Welcome to the lectures on fundamentals of MIMO wireless communications. Uh, now, since we have uh, studied the properties of the channel, uh, that is the flag fading channel, then the frequency selective fading channel, then the space selective channel. Uh, we have seen the statistical properties of H, which is the matrix uh, relating the multiple input to the multiple outputs. Uh, we have seen uh, how it can be factored into its eigenvalues and singular values. Uh, we have also seen uh, that there is a distribution of the joint distribution of the eigenvalues. We have also seen there is the distribution for the minimum eigenvalue. Uh, so, these, these will be handy when we uh, carry forward with our discussion. Uh, we have also seen uh, the moment generating function for provenience norm of H and we have always said that these are uh, random variables. So, uh, again the uh, moment generating function would be useful. So, now uh, we are uh, at a time where uh, we can start our journey into understanding the different uh, communication techniques which take advantage of the spatial mode of the channel. So, uh, usually the study is uh, can be looked at uh, from the point of view as uh, spatial diversity. So, we have spatial diversity to study and the other thing we have is spatial multiplexing. Uh, these are the two uh, very important things uh, in MIMO communications. Of course, there are beam forming and other things, but uh, these are primary uh, based on which uh, many things evolve. So, uh, we will start our discussion with diversity and uh, then uh, once we are complete with this, we will move on to multiplexing and then uh, we will have a discussion on diversity multiplexing trade off. That means, uh, given a set of uh, number of multiple antennas, uh, how can we get diversity gain and multiplexing gain or uh, maybe um, part of one, part of the other or simultaneously both. Uh, those are some of the things uh, which are important. So, uh, in some cases uh, people do study uh, spatial multiplexing uh, to begin with. However, uh, we will take diversity because uh, that is uh, most straightforward that comes directly from your understanding of wireless communications and uh, then a little bit more advanced topic is spatial multiplexing. So, that is how we will proceed. So, uh, when we look at uh, diversity, uh, diversity uh, is this is this is basically spatial diversity. So, spatial diversity is uh, we have the input side and uh, we have the output. So, when I say input that means the transmitter we have the transmitter side enabled with multiple antennas. We have the receiver side which is enabled with multiple antennas. So, that is the transmitter and the receiver. So, uh, as we have seen that we have many channels, the first kind of channel is the CISO where single input, single output which is studied in classical uh, wireless communications. Uh, then you have a single input multiple output. We have uh, seen how to write these kind of channels. Uh, then we have uh, multiple input single output. We have also seen how to write these expressions and then finally, we have multiple input multiple output. So, our aim would be to understand how to get diversity gain uh, out of uh, all these different uh, modes of operation. Uh, CISO mode of operation is uh, what we will not see very explicitly, but uh, that can be covered anyway. So, uh, let us, so we will we'll basically look at the how do you extract diversity in this direction. So, uh, when we study spatial diversity, uh, you have the option of doing when I say single input multiple output, we mean to say that uh, you can obtain diversity at the receiver side multiple input single output means you can do diversity at the transmitter side and MIMO means you will be able to do it on, on both the sides. So, when you do at the receiver side, uh, things are relatively easier, but the moment you have to do anything at the transmitter side, uh, there are two possibilities of doing them. Uh, so, when you do processing at the transmitter, one is you may need a feedback of channel information that means, H information related to H has to be fed back. There could be another mode of operation where uh, no feedback and this is very, very interesting because uh, when there is no feedback, uh, the interesting part is uh, you can keep on transmitting uh, without uh, waiting 
to get the channel information at the transmitter. Our aim would be to uh, cover these different aspects of uh, communication in this. So, let us uh, get into the study of uh, spatial diversity. So, when we talk about diversity, when we use the term diversity, uh, this is uh, not very new to communications. Uh, when you do wireless communications, uh, the different uh, domains that you access are time domain, uh, frequency domain and finally, the space domain. Right. Uh, we have seen uh, the channel can be described, a channel has its uh, variability in the time, where it is slow or fast fading, it is variability in frequency, flat or frequency selective, it is variability in the space uh, that is rich or poor scattering. So, we are not referring to that, currently we are uh, of course, that is very, very critical, but uh, currently we are talking of obtaining diversity from time domain, frequency domain and space domain. What I mean by this is that a diversity can be obtained in time domain, it can be ob obtained uh, from frequency domain and finally, it can be obtained in the space domain. Uh, before we launch into the space domain, uh, let us briefly take a look at uh, what is the meaning of diversity. By diversity, uh, what we mean is that uh, when I have sent a signal into the air, I would like to receive multiple copies of the signal at the receiver. So, when we receive multiple copies, uh, we could receive the copies in time domain, we could receive them in frequency domain and we could also receive them in the space domain. So, before we go to space domain, when we talk about time domain, uh, when I would like to receive them in time domain, uh, suppose uh, I would send x of t, if I would send x of t. I would write to receive x of t, which I would write it as uh, x uh, cap, let us say, at a time t and I would also like to receive x cap at a time t plus tau. So, once I have multiple copies of the signal, then I can do something. Uh, we will see what we can do. When I talk of frequency domain, suppose uh, I get write capital X as the frequency domain information of T. So, if uh, I would send it at a certain frequency f, I would like to get it at f as well as at x of f plus some spacing, let us say delta f. Right. Uh, we will describe the space domain separately. So, in, in time domain, uh, things uh, can be, one can imagine that I have, uh, I would receive the first delay version of the signal at tau 0, I would receive the replica of the signal again at tau 1 and so on and so forth up to tau n, that means the maximum delay. And uh, if these signals are uncorrelated, that means x at delay t 0, x at delay tau 1, x at delay tau n, if they are uncorrelated, then we can get some benefit out of it. Simply because uh, if you remember with the way we write, if I say y of t is the received signal and uh, what I get is basically h convolution with x okay, plus noise. Okay. So, I would be receiving multiple copies because of this convolution and if these copies are not correlated, uncorrelated scattering, then I could take advantage of it and do certain things. There are methods of doing it. Uh, if it is flat fading, that means, uh, sorry, if a flat fitting means uh, all these are at the same delay, uh, then still you have multiple paths. The signal does come from multiple paths, but since the delays are the same, uh, they would appear at the same time and we cannot separate them. They are appearing at the same instant of time. Uh, so, in order to uh, get multiple copies, I would have to send x at t 1 and I would have to send the same x again at a time x t 2. Right. So, that means, I am using two instants of time to receive two copies. If I look at the frequency domain, uh, again if there is uh, the spread in the Doppler frequency, I would receive the signal at f and I would again receive the signal at f plus delta f. Uh, whereas, uh, yes and, and uh, if there is uh, frequency selectivity, uh, then also the signal, the copy of the signal I receive at f and the copy of the signal I receive at f plus delta f are again uh, uncorrelated. 
but in the frequency domain rather I have to send a signal at a frequency x f 1 and a frequency at x f 2. That means, I will be sending the same signal at two different frequencies and I will be receiving them. So, what we see from here that means, I am sending at two different time and I am sending at two different frequencies. Uh, that means, I am using time t 1 and time t 2 or I will be using frequency f 1 and frequency f 2 to get two copies. So, in uh, wireless communication we all know that the uh, time and frequency resources are very, very costly and uh, that is the spectrum basically. So, we would like to make a maximum use of it and there are different ways of uh, achieving diversity gain. So, if, if I am going to use this particular method that means, uh, use replicated transmission in the time domain or replicated transmission in the frequency domain, I am using uh, more than one resource of time or frequency to send the same information. Uh, there could be smarter ways of doing it. So, this uh, could be one of the possibilities, but may not be always recommended. So, this uh, is valid, but whether uh, this one is to be used or not is a secondary question. You, you may be aware of uh, uh, forward error correction codes. In short, it is written as F E C that is forward error correction code. So, in forward error correction code uh, usually parity bits are added. That means, uh, we are having a sequence of bits and uh, then a new code word is formed. So, if I have let us say 3 bits and 2 bits of parity are added, I generate a new code word which is 5 bits. So, when we have this 5 bits of information. So, instead of sending 3, I am sending 5 bits. If it is a very plain and simple system, I will be using 5 bit durations. So, previously I was using 3 bit duration. That means, let us say I have uh, 3 bits to send. I add 2 parity bits, then I get 5 bits in total. So, previously I was using 3 times each bit duration indicated as T b. Now, I have to use 5 times the bit duration. So, I am actually using extra time and I am spending some of my time resources. So, it is costly, but this is of course, necessary uh, and the other advantage is uh, we need not necessarily send this in time domain. Uh, there could be many, many different ways of doing it. If we are using higher order constellation, then uh, probably all these bits could be easily captured into one symbol and uh, we can send them out. So, without losing time and uh, we could also distribute them over frequency and, uh, and uh, we could also gain benefit out of it. And lastly, if you are using very, very long code words, then your efficiency is very, very large and in that case the loss due to the parity would be significantly less. So, uh, this is another mode of getting, uh, getting some gain, uh, but it is somewhat related uh, to this diversity gain that uh, we will be discussing. So, going beyond this, uh, if we look into the spatial dimension, uh, if we look at the spatial dimension, uh, suppose I have uh, one transmit antenna at the transmitter side, I am drawing this as the transmitter and uh, in a typical single input single output system, I will call this as the receiver. So, when the signal goes out uh, to the receiver, uh, let us say x of t, it is easily received as y of t in the, at the receiver and uh, if I would draw on the x axis, let us say this is time and uh, this is the gain of the received signal strength. Let us say y of t uh, mod squared, let us say we do this and uh, what do we expect and let us let us assume ok. On all cases, uh, we will be assuming flat fading and uh, we will be also assuming slow fading unless otherwise mentioned, uh, these will be the prime assumptions. So, with time uh, I am going to get fluctuation of signal strength which is random, we have already discussed this. Uh, if it is rally distributed, then this will be exponential distribution, the envelope uh, squared would be exponential distribution. Uh, we have also discussed about the, uh, the variability being captured by Doppler, the coherence time and all kinds of things we have already discussed related to this. Now, uh, we have also discussed that uh, there is uh, level crossing rate, if there is a certain threshold. Uh, the rate at which it crosses the threshold. We have also discussed there is this average duration of fade when signal goes below the threshold. So, we have actually uh, talked about this indicating that these are performance metric means if it goes below a threshold there is outage. 
and uh, what we usually define uh, of course, other than B E R probability that the S N R received S N R as a function of time or received S N R. Uh, I can the received S N R is less than a certain threshold. Yeah. So, if received S N R is less than a certain threshold, uh, what is this probability? So, we would like to have this probability as low as possible, uh, that is one of the desired things. So, if we want uh, this probability to be low, uh, what you usually do is instead of uh, sending the transmitted signal by the way we have drawn it, uh, we would like to increase the level of the transmit power. So, that the received signal strength is something like what we are drawing here. So, that means, uh, if I push the transmit power, the, the received power increases. So, instead of the blue one, uh, we whatever is the new line that we have drawn is what we are going to get. And if this is my uh, threshold, that means, this gamma T h, then uh, what we will see is that, since I have increased the transmit power, average transmit power, there is hardly any probability that the signal goes below this threshold. So, we are reducing the probability. So, that means, uh, we are able to, we are actually giving a margin margin is by means of transmitting extra power that we are able to achieve uh, this condition. Whereas, uh, now instead uh, let us look at the situation that we have another receive antenna, this is antenna 1 and this is antenna 2. So, we can use a different color for this, let us say this one it may not be so clear, but this is green in color. So, and the same signal will now be received in antenna 2 as well. I have not sent any multiple signal, we have sent x of t or according to our earlier description s tilde of t in the baseband equivalent or the low pass equivalent signal. Uh, whatever was received here, I would receive another copy of the signal. Right. This is uh, very, very clear, because there are reflectors around and uh, we would be getting scattered scattered components. Uh, we will uh, we'll use the narrow band antenna array assumption, that means, the signal here remains the same, except there is a phase shift. So, yeah. So, so basically uh, with this, whatever signal I receive here, let us say in, in the first antenna, we receive the signal y of t or y 1 of t whatever we are going to receive in the second antenna, we could write it as y 2 of t. And uh, if this distance of separation, if this distance of separation is let us say some uh, delta x, let us say this distance is delta x. Now, what we have studied when we studied the channel in the special domain, we said that if delta x is less than the coherence distance, then the signal received in both these two antennas are correlated. Whereas, if this distance is greater than the coherence distance, they are uncorrelated. Uh, we have also seen that when signals arrive from all directions with equal probability, that means when p of theta is equal to 1 by 2 pi, we have studied this case, uh, we have seen that the correlation is a function of j 0, 2 pi delta x by lambda. And uh, this leads to that means, if I look at the mod squared of the signal, what we have find is that at a separation of lambda by 2 approximately, that means, we have found it to be 0.38 lambda, th the correlation goes to 0. That means, decorrelation distance is lambda by 2. So, if this uh, separation is uh, more than lambda by 2, let us say if, if it is comparable to lambda by 2, the signal received here y 1 and y 2 would be uncorrelated. In that case, uh, we can tentatively draw uh, a received signal. I will take that blue one is the transmitted signal. We could take a uncorrelated signal coming in at that place. So, what we can see is uh, statistically the blue and the green signals that means, received by antenna 1 and antenna 2, they appear similar. Uh, there is the same threshold, signals go below the threshold. Right, the average is more or less the same, but now 
if uh, we take both these signals simultaneously and uh, for instance, although this picture is getting a bit cluttered, uh, we will use uh, one pink color. So, suppose I will use a thicker line here. Suppose we use device a method by which uh, out of these two signals that is y 1 and y 2, uh, we select the best of the two. That means, uh, in this in this part of the time, uh, we select the blue one in the next part of the time, we select the green one, next when blue is high, then green, then blue, then green is high, we are riding the crest, blue is high, then green is high, I am just following whichever is highest, the blue is high, green, blue, green, 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 blue, green, blue, green and so on and so forth. So, this is the signal that I am going to get, if I select the best out of the two. So, that means, uh, if I carefully study this situation, uh, we are uh, receiving signal at antenna 1 and also receiving it antenna 2. Uh, we have not used the extra power, that means we have not uh, done what was uh, done during the, the, the red color. So, we have kept the same average power as earlier, but whatever is received here the same average received signal will be will be here. This is because of stationarity. That means, within the coherence distance within within several several tens of coherence distance special uh, special distance which is within a certain region uh, the homogeneous channel assumption. We had made the homogeneous channel assumption basically we had made wide sense stationarity uncorrelated wide sense stationarity uncorrelated scattering and homogeneous. This is the assumption that we made. Uh, the average received signal strength is the same in, in a certain area. Uh, then, what we see is that even though these individual links, the blue link and this green link, green link they go below this threshold, whereas this uh, pink color which is riding the crest of them, which is taking the best of the green and the blue is hardly going below this threshold. There might be occasions, but in this particular diagram uh, we do not have it. So, what we see is that by virtue of getting independent signals in these two branches, there is a po possibility that the probability received signal strength goes below the threshold uh, becomes very, very low. We can make it very, very low. So, this is in short what you can say uh, the advantage uh, due to diversity and uh, in this case we are not using extra time, we are not using T 1 and T 2 we are not using f 1 and f 2, right. Uh, we are not using extra power, the transmitter is uh, sending at the same power p t, we have not increased the power, simply because uh, we have used another received antenna, this is at no cost, no cost to the spectrum, no cost to the power at the transmitter. Uh, we have been able to improve the performance. Uh, the, the cost of course, nothing comes for, for free, so there has to be a cost that is paid. So, the cost that is paid over here is receiver complexity, because each of these uh, branches, these, these branches, this blue and this green branches, these are all separate branches. So, when these two branches are separate branches, uh, they have their own receiver circuitry, they will have their own receiver circuitry. So, your receiver cost, the receiver cost would go up, that is the penalty that you are paying for this otherwise uh, nothing else and uh, receiver cost is going to go up and along with that uh, because the complexity is up uh, what you can also guess is receiver power consumption would go up simply because uh, you are processing at uh, more than one branch this is called a branch this is one of the received branches this is another received branch so you have to do processing with as many branches so if there are mr antennas your signal processing cost goes up at least in the rf section a baseband section complexity uh, would be different. Uh, so, at this cost at least you are able to get the signal out of uh, the deep fade conditions where there was a single antenna that is used. So, uh, this is the prime motivation that uh, we go for diversity. Now, uh, in the case that uh, we place the antennas uh, which are not uh, separated by coherence distance, that means uh, suppose uh, we place an antenna. Uh, which is somewhere in between and which is not less than the coherence distance. Uh, in that case, the signal would be correlated, but we have to find certain combiner technique, 
there would be combining techniques at the receiver. So, we have to use certain combiner technique and still you could get something extra. The fundamental reason uh, why this is happening if you have to understand intuitively, uh, the moment I add an extra antenna, the moment I am adding extra antennas, uh, what I am doing is effectively capturing more energy. Uh, this is one intuitive explanation. That means, suppose uh, I have a signal, suppose I have a radiator, it is radiating some signal. Uh, receive antenna is having a certain size. If I put one more antenna, it is capturing a little bit more of the surface area. If I put another capture uh, another uh, <coughs> antenna, it is capturing a little bit more of the surface area. So, I am capturing more energy. Now, uh, when I do this, uh, then I have to combine the signals in such a way that I, I can take advantage of it. This, this is an intuitive rough explanation of what is happening. So, uh, so, for this, this there is no change in the transmitter configuration, only the receiver configuration changes and we can get benefit out of it. So, this is the, if, um, this is the basic uh, motivation for using receive diversity. We can do a similar technique at the transmit side and uh, that we will see of course, uh, at a later time. So, with this uh, we start our journey into finding the, uh, the quantitative gains that we can get out of uh, such signal processing techniques uh, using special diversity. Thank you.